Kitty. And I'm Jennifer. And we're the O'Neill Sisters, and we're going to show you how to make this beautiful crystal illusion necklace. We saw a necklace similar to this at Nordstrom, and it was expensive, so we looked at it closely and figured out how to make it. Here's what you need to make the necklace. The first thing is a piece of felt to keep your beads from rolling around on the table, or you could use a bead board. Then you need a pair of chain nose pliers, and be sure to pick the kind that are smooth on the inside, not the ridged kind. Then you need a pair of wire snips or flush cutters. And you need a second pair of pliers. They could be chain nose or round nose like these. And that's just to open and close jump rings, and we'll show you how to do that at the end of the project. We're going to make the necklace on bead stringing wire, and we got this at the craft store. You can also get it at your local bead store. It says bead stringing wire in teeny tiny print right there, but that's how you'll recognize it. It comes in three sizes, 7, 19, and 45. 7 is inexpensive, and 45 is very expensive. 19 is just right. And we chose silver color because the wire shows in this necklace. To measure those strands, we're going to use a tape measure. Then you need crimp tubes, and these crimp tubes are what are, do all the magic work in this necklace. They're like tiny metal straws. See, they're open on the inside, and what we're going to do is flatten those to hold our beads in place. And you need about um, 60 of these for the project. We've chosen number one size, which is the eeny tiny size, and this little container has 250 of these little guys in it, so you probably won't run out. And then we're going to need a clasp for the end and we have a, just a silver lobster clasp for that. We have a jump ring for each end of our strands and we're going to hold our strands together in this clamshell bead tip. So it's got a little clam on the end and then a little loop at the top and when we put our strands in there we're going to secure it with jeweler's glue also from the bead store or craft store. The last thing you need are beads and this is the fun part. We've selected a bunch of faceted crystal beads in one sort of similar color story in all different shapes and sizes. And then we selected bicone crystals. Again, they're the same color story, all different sizes and shapes. For these larger beads, you need about 30, which is about 10 per strand. And for the bicones, it kind of doesn't matter how many you have. Just sort of raid your bead bin and see um, what you've got. And we're going to build the design as we go. And we're ready to go. To get started, we need to cut our bead stringing wire into three lengths, 20 inches, 20 and a half inches, and 21 inches. And we've already cut our first piece, which is 20 inches. That's our shortest piece. And we will start beading on that piece of wire. So we're gonna start in the middle of this bead stringing wire. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick out a bead that's gonna go in the center. And then I'm gonna get my crimp tubes. And I'm gonna take two crimp tubes out of the container and I'm going to slide one crimp tube onto my wire. You, it, might, you might need reading glasses for this. You might. It's, it's tricky. These are so tiny. Um, so I'm just going to let that sit sort of at the mi middle of the bead stringing wire, and then I'm going to slide a bead on, and then I'm going to slide my next crimp tube on. So to go crimp tube, bead, crimp tube. And then I'm going to slide these around to get them where I want the bead, right there. And then I'm going to take the chain nose pliers, and these are the ones, again, with the smooth surface on the inside. I'm going to reach down, and I'm going to flatten one of the crimps. She's crimping it. See how it's nice and crimped there and flat? Then I'm going to press this bead up against that crimp, nice and tight, because you don't want it to slide around. And I'm going to slide this next crimp tube right up next to the bead. Use my chain nose pliers again to flatten that crimp. And you can see it doesn't slide around now. It's almost a necklace. Yay! Then we're going to pick uh, any other bead, just a bead at random. This is a nice um, sort of random necklace that's part of the design. I think I'll take one of these. And I think I'll, what, what if I put some bicones on either I side think that of that? that would look nice. I'm going to do that. Kind of doesn't matter which ones I pick. I'm they, going to pick yeah. those. Before I slide those on, I need to put another crimp tube on the wire to hold it in place. So I've got a crimp tube there, and I find it's helpful to put it in my hand and sort of fish it with, like this is fishing line, sort of 
get it on the on the wire like that. It's a little trick. And I'm going to slide that down. And we'll place that in a second where we want it. Then we want a bicone. Again, you might want, at least you want good lighting to see what you're doing. But I use readers for this. They definitely help, especially if you're, if you're doing this in a living room where the lighting isn't necessarily yeah. that good. So we've got our bicone, our rondel, and our next bicone on there with the crimp on one side. We're going to get another crimp bead out. Because like the first bead, it's going to go crimp and then bead and then crimp. This one, there's three beads, but it's still crimp and then bead cluster and then crimp. And that's true of every time you do put a bead on here or, or a cluster, you want to be sure you have crimps on either side. Now I'm going to space this out a little bit so some of this um, bead stringing wire shows. Um, I don't know, three quarters of an inch? Does that seem good, Katie? That does seem good. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten that crimp right next to that bead. You see it's about three quarters of an inch there. We're going to slide the, this little bead cluster down so it's touching that first crimp. Hold it tight. I'm using gravity here to kind of get that crimp down next to that bicone. And then I'm going to flatten that next crimp. So we're just going to continue on like this, adding a bead and a crimp on each side, bead cluster, crimp on each side, until we have filled up this first strand. And it will have about 10 of these beads or bead clusters and then we'll show you how to do your second strand. Now we have our first strand, the short strand, 20 inch one, completely beaded, and every bead is held in place with a crimp on each side, and we're ready to bead our second strand, and this strand is our 20 and a half inch length of bead stringing wire. So to bead this next strand, we're gonna start by sliding a crimp bead on, just like we did with our first strand crimp bead. And what we want to do when we're picking out a bead um, to go toward the center of this um, second strand, we want to pick out a bead that's slightly different from the ones closest to it. So I'm going to pick this teardrop bead and I'm going to slide it on. You can picture that these strands are going to lay one over the other on your neck and so you want them to fill up the spaces and you want the beads to go in between the other beads. So then I'm going to put a bicon or a um, crimp tube on the other side, and then we're going to place it. And the placement here is key. If I can get my crimps to cooperate, which they're not cooperating. There we go. They're so tiny. Teeny tiny. Okay. So to place this bead, I want to make sure that it sits in between these other beads. So that's why we've laid this strand out. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and um, crimp one side. And I've lined the ends up of my bead stringing wire so that I know that this, this is where that, that bead is going to end up sitting. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before, which is make sure that crimp is nice and tight next to the bead, and then smash it or crimp it with the chain nose pliers. And then we pick out our next bead, but first we're going to put another crimp tube because each time it's going to go crimp tube and then bead or bead cluster and then crimp tube. So in there we've got our crimp on there and then to go in between these maybe we want to pick one of these dark flat guys. I like that. That's good. This is called a lentil, that shape of bead. It's kind of flat. These are faceted. All of these beads are crystal and faceted. It's nice when they're similar like that. You're able to mix different colors but because the beads themselves are similar they end up giving sort of a uniform look and a nice design. And you can pick different colors for this necklace. We chose these pretty blues, kind of ocean, summer look, but you could do uh, all black beads on black wire. They sell this bead stringing wire in black. Or you could do all crystal on silver, and that would look very, almost bridal. Ooh, Maybe that you would could be do glamorous. that for your bridesmaids. Um, this is a nice little mistake that has just happened, or a little, a little snag, and that's that the hole in this lentil bead is bigger than my crimp. So you can see that the, it's sliding over. It's not going to hold it in place because these crimps are very small. And, th and this happens, and it's no big deal at all. There are great solutions for this. I'm going to go ahead and slide that bead and crimp off. And I'm going to solve it by putting a, a pair of bicones on, uh, on either side. 
These bite cones are so small that they have very small holes. So it's almost certain that the bite cone will be held in place by the crimp bead. And you can just, if you put bite cones around every one of your beads, then you'd be guaranteed that they wouldn't slide over your crimps. Yeah, that would solve it just straight off the bat. But you can also just test it. That, see, that holds it just fine. So we'll put another bite cone on the other side because I'm going to assume that the hole is too big all the way through. We'll just continue on beading like this, adding crimp bead crimp or crimp bead cluster crimp until we have about 10 on this strand. And we'll finish up our third strand and we'll be ready to put on the clasp. Now we have all three strands beaded, our short strand, our medium length strand, and our longest strand, and we're ready to put on our ends. So to do that, we're going to take the short strand first, and we're going to feed the end up through this clamshell bead tip. There's a little hole at the bottom of the clamshell. I'm going to slide that on, and then I'm going to grab a crimp tube. Drop the crimp tubes first. I'm going to slide that on. If I can get one. Okay, and I'm going to crimp this crimp tube way at the end, so there's just a tiny bit of the wire showing there, just like that. So it's almost to the, the total end there. Then I'm going to take the medium length of bead stringing wire, feed it up through the same clamshell bead tip bottom, just like that. Again, I'll take a crimp tube. Slide it on there. And finishing the ends is always the really the tricky part of making any piece of jewelry. And this this trick with the crimp Oops. bead, whoop, this trick with the crimp bead and this little clamshell bead tip, this will work anytime you make a necklace with bead stringing wire. It's a good way to finish those ends. And then the clamshell has a little loop at the end that you can attach your clasp to. It's a cool little thing. So then we're going to grab the last strand, feed it up through the hole in the bead, the clamshell bead tip, which is a very hard thing to say. Grab another crimp, and we're going to crimp that way out on the end, almost to the tippy, tippy top. Great. Okay, now we're going to take the clamshell bead tip and pull it, the strands all the way down so that those little crimped ends are sitting kind of in that little cup. And then we're going to add a little dab of this jeweler's glue just for, you know, peace of mind and security. It's a little insurance. It doesn't, probably doesn't really need it, but we like to make sure these things are secure. So thank you. Then we're going to take our chain nose pliers and we're going to close the clamshell. And I'm not pressing very hard on this metal because I don't want it to get marred or, or dent, dented. And I'm going to go ahead and close this loop. We are not going to use it because we're going to use a jump ring instead. So that's nice and tidy that and closed. That looks great. Look how nice that is. It's so clean. Very finished. Now we want to add the jump ring and clasp. And to do that, we're going to use a pair of chain nose pliers on one side of where, where the opening is on this jump ring. It's right at the top there. We're going to grab a second pair of pliers on the other side, and we're just going to twist kind of like we're opening a door. You don't want to change the shape of the jump ring. It remains a circle or a hoop this way. We're going to feed that loop on there and our lobster clasp. And you could use a fancy clasp on this necklace, but it's always going to be in the back. So just use a lobster clasp and save your fancy clasp for a different necklace. We're going to use our two pairs of pliers on our jump ring to close our jump ring, like that. And now we've got our end on one side. That looks great. And we will do just the same thing to the other side. We'll put on the clamshell bead tip and we'll attach a jump ring to that. And we don't need to put a clasp on that end because that's the end that we'll grab onto this lobster clasp. And we're done. So here's our finished necklace. We think it turned out better than the one at Nordstrom. And it went together so fast, even though it is a multi-strand necklace. It's amazing that just using those crimp tubes make the beads look like they're floating. We hope you have fun making your own crystal illusion necklace. Mm -hmm.